All right, let's do a quick video today about OBD1 tuning. So Chevy's from the mid 80s up until 95 ran OBD1 stuff. This is a Motes APU1 Autoprom which can do live tuning, chip burning, data logging, pretty much everything you need to do. This part is for your inputs. I had my wideband hooked up to it um, with the 0 to 5 volt reference and uh, that way you can data log your wideband right in with your data stream. This is the connector that goes to the car itself. Um, so this, this is the prom. This is the chip that you program in order to change the actual tune. Uh, this is the knock sensor uh, and the, what do you call it, the uh, limp mode uh, put on here. And I'll sh kind of show you how all this stuff works. So the chip itself is what we're going to change the memory on. Um, the Beretta was a 32 kilobyte tune. My truck was a 64. I think they had even less than that at some point, but um, this is a 27SF512. Is that right? 27SF512. Yeah, I thought that was it. Uh, you can get these from moats.net. Uh, and this is a rewritable chip. Uh, the, like the factory chip. Let's see, I got one of these here. So like here's a, a prom from Chevy that hasn't been a part. And this Delco AUXY. The AUXY is the actual tune for this one. I don't remember what this one was. Um, <clears throat> but when you pull this thing apart, you end up with this. You can take the factory chip out of there. And then this chip. They also have different adapters you can put together. But you stick the chip right in there, uh, drop it in, and then if you are leaving this, they also have this little adapter here um, so that you can, rather than taking the whole thing apart every time, you can leave the chip right on there and uh, tune it that way. So you leave the chip assembled on the, the, uh, the actual prom itself and you can tune it that way. This, I'm actually sending a chip uh, to somebody that I know. So I'm going to do just the chip part itself, and they're going to have to swap it on the prom that's already there. So to make this work, take the chip. You see a little notch at the top there? The notch goes up, and the chip goes to the bottom here. There's a couple extra slots that we're not using on this 27SF512. So the chip goes all the way to the bottom with a notch at the top. And you can lock it in. Once you lock it in, you're good to go. Then we'll come to Tuner Pro. So uh, this is a data log that I had saved from before. Um, but this is, this is the kind of data you'll get from the data stream. Uh, I've modified the definition here to make like the BLM and INTs uh, neutral at 100 rather than 128 which makes them a little easier to read. Um, and then another thing that I like to look at is the, the actual wideband AFR versus the target AFR. So you know how close your tune is at that point. So you can see here, this is about a percent off. This is about 4% off. So we're, we're within range, but this is, this is not what we're doing right now. Uh, right now we're going to actually burn another chip. So let me, let me stick this somewhere so that I can put it down and, and show you what I'm doing. Okay, I think we got it rigged up here so you can see. Um, turn the lights off so I got no glare. Uh, the chip is loaded up in the Autoprom. Um, we have already initialized the emulation hardware, um, which you'll have to do if you plug in the Autoprom after you've turned on Tuner Pro. If you have the Autoprom plugged in first, it will initialize automatically when you turn on Tuner Pro. Um, but with that all initialized, we can go to the prom IO and that gives us uh, all this information here. So the chip addressing has to match the chip that you're, you're using and then also the tune that you're putting in there. So this is a 32 kilobyte tune. Um, like I said, my truck one 
uh, was a 64, so you have to change your buffer start and end and your chip start and end to match the 27SF512 chip with either the 32 kilobyte or 64 kilobyte um, tune that you're using. Uh, this was the 94Z71. It was the uh, dollar sign OD mask, where this is the dollar sign A1 for the Beretta, uh, for the V6. But when you have these set up to match, uh, then you're good to go. I had to, I made this little notepad file because I had to switch back and forth when I was doing tunes for the truck and tunes for the Beretta. Um, and there's the Camaro back when it used to run. But, uh, so that I already have set up here for the 32 kilobyte file that we're going to be doing. Um, so what I'm going to do here first is erase the chip. And it tells me the erase succeeded. Uh, then you can do a blank check to make sure that it worked. Okay, chip is blank. So now we're going to load the tune to the buffer. Um, so this is the tune I'm going to load in. 32 kilobyte file. I know it's all set for A1. I just put it together here. Uh, turn off a couple codes. So now we've got the file loaded in the buffer already. We know the chip is blank. We can program the chip. And it says our, our I.O. succeeded, so now we can do a verify chip. So what it's going to do is read the chip and verify it with the buffer file that we have selected to make sure nothing weird went on. And verification succeeded. So that means the chip now has this tune that we just loaded in there, and we can put that back in the car and run it with it. And that's all you need to do as far as uh, flashing the tune to a chip with the Autoprom. Um, I could do a whole other video on what to actually change in the tune itself. Um, there is a ton of stuff. Uh, let's see. So like your fuel maps are typically what you're going to work with. Uh, so this is our VE table. Um, this has the injector scaled for 28 pound injector. Uh, and you can get a look at what the uh, the map actually looks like. There are some highs and lows in here um, and you can try and smooth that out a little bit. Smoother is better but then you also will find some places like this spot here or like this little peak here where you know you can sort of smooth things out but if you're getting the same data over and over and over again that says this needs to be a little bit higher you know if, you're, if your map isn't completely smooth, that's just kind of the way it goes. You, you still want to be accurate to the data that you're data logging. Um, so this this tune here, um, you can see it's a wide open throttle 53. So it's my 53rd revision of the uh, of the tune after I put the wide open throttle tech uh, heads and cam in this thing. So it can be sort of a slow process. Um, I mean, I had it running pretty good after a couple dozen tunes and then the couple dozen after that we're really dialing things in perfect getting my wide open throttle fueling just right uh that sort of thing but uh it takes some time but man the the way the way you can dial it in and, and get it perfect basically for everything uh is is worth the time um i've actually bought a couple chips from different uh different vendors. I know some friends of mine have had chips from different vendors. You know, they're kind of a one size fits all and they don't fit anything that great. So uh, a, a custom tune is really kind of your only option if you want it to run perfect. Uh, you know, you're going to be making sacrifices otherwise. And um, the way I look at it, you, you spend money on hard parts to, to make horsepower um, you've got to, I mean, this, an auto problem isn't too expensive, but, uh, it's the time investment that you have to do that to get that working right. Uh, but the, the time ends up being worth it, um, because without, without some tune work, those, those parts are never really going to run quite right. And you're not, you're not going to get the money's worth out of them that you would, uh, once you, once you really dial them in right. So here's a spare computer I got kicking around. I figure I'll show you. So this this is where the wiring plugs in from the car itself. And then there's an access panel here. The prom chip drops in. There are, I'll show you, 
there's little alignment nubs. So there's one there and two here. You can see there's two there, one there. You get those lined up. Oops. And it snaps in. And that's all there is to it as far as changing the prom assembly, pulling it out to, uh, to mess with it or change it around. It's pretty simple. Well, I hope watching this helped. Um, if you're wondering about getting an auto prom uh, and how, how difficult it is to dive into OBD1 tuning, um, I hope this gives you a little bit of a taste of that. And uh, I'm not going to lie, it takes it takes a time investment to, to kind of get it figured out and, uh, and go with it. But it's sort of a necessary evil. If you want the thing to run right, uh, you got to put the time in to, to make it happen. If there is anything else that uh, you'd like to see a little bit more in depth, uh, drop a comment below and I can work on uh, the little how-to there on, on whatever you need to know.